Question 1. The nursing assistant can help prevent tooth decay by assisting residents to brush their teeth how often? A. At least once a day. B. Once in the morning and once in the evening. C. In the morning and then after each meal. D. Three times at least three hours apart. The correct answer is C. Depending on the number of meals in each day, teeth are to be cleaned in the morning on awakening and then after each meal. All of the other answer options do not state the proper frequency of teeth cleaning. The first step in preventing the spread of germs is which of the following? A. Covering of the resident's mouth when sneezing. B. Hand washing. C. Keeping the living area clean. D. Emptying the trash every day. The correct answer is B. Hand washing is the most important task a nursing assistant can perform to prevent the spread of infection. Although the other answer options help prevent the spread of germs, they are not the first step in doing so. Question 3. All of the following are examples of the patient's Bill of Rights except the right to which of the following? A. Privacy and dignity. B. Confidentiality. C. Accept or refuse treatment. D. Low-cost care. The correct answer is D. A, B, and C are all included in the patient's Bill of Rights. Question 4. Which of the following members of the healthcare team is responsible for prescribing medical care? A. Nurse. B. Physician or nurse practitioner. C. Social worker. D. Nurse assistant. The correct answer is B. The physician or nurse practitioner is the only member of the healthcare team who is licensed to prescribe medical care for the residents. The nurse is responsible for carrying out both the medical plan of care prescribed by the physician as well as the nursing care plan developed by the nursing staff. Answer A. The social worker in the long-term care connects the residents and family to resources available. Answer C. The nursing assistant's role is a provider of direct personal care. Answer D. Question 5. When the resident requests pain medication, but the nurse appears busy, what is the appropriate action of the nursing assistant? A. Report the request for pain medication to the nurse immediately. B. Report the request for pain medication to the nurse when he or she appears less busy. C. Tell the resident to wait for the pain medication until the pain is worse. D. Tell the resident to call the nurse herself and request the pain medication. The correct answer is A. The nursing assistant is legally and ethically responsible to report pain or discomfort to the nurse as soon as possible once it is discovered. The other options represent a delay in reporting, which could lead to a change in health status or safety for the resident. Question 6. The steps used to rescue a conscious choking victim that cannot cough, speak or breathe begins with A. Back blows. B. CPR. C. Arm elevation. D. Abdominal thrust. The correct answer is A. The steps to rescue a conscious choking victim begins with back blows and then moves to abdominal thrusts. Question 7. An observation of warmth and redness to the resident's elbow is reported as which of the following? A. Jaundice. B. Edema. C. Inflammation. D. Cyanosis. The correct answer is C. Signs of inflammation are warmth, redness, and swelling. Jaundice, answer A, is a yellowing of the eyes, mucous membranes, and skin. Edema, answer B, is the collection of fluid into the subcutaneous tissue. Cyanosis, answer D, is a bluish tint to the skin from decreased oxygenation of the vessels close to the skin surface. Question 8. The correct statement regarding religious beliefs of residents is which of the following? A. Residents should not be concerned about religious beliefs. B. Each resident has a right to his or her own religious beliefs. C. The staff may force residents to believe as they do. D. Staff or residents are not to discuss religious beliefs. The correct answer is B. Every resident is entitled to his or her own religious beliefs and should not feel forced to change or ignore his or her beliefs. Question 9. Which of the following residents has the greatest risk for falling? A. The resident who has difficulty with balance. B. The hearing impaired resident. C. The resident who uses a cane to ambulate. D. The resident who often has visitors. The correct answer is A. Residents who have difficulty with balance fall more often. Although the residents listed in the other options might need assistance with ambulation, they are not at the greatest risk for falling. Question 10. Which of the following is appropriate for a nursing assistant working in a long-term care facility? A. Preparing and administering tube feedings for a resident who is on aspiration precautions. B. Changing linens of an incontinent resident. C. Applying splints of a resident who has had a stroke. D. Changing the intravenous tubings of a resident receiving medication. The correct answer is B. The changing of linens falls within the role and responsibilities of the nursing assistant. The remaining options are the role and responsibilities of the registered and licensed practical nurse. Question 11. An important safety step to be completed by the nursing assistant before the client is transported for a procedure is to 
A. Identify the client. B. Ensure that the client is clean. C. Make sure the client has eaten. D. Position the client. The correct answer is C. The first safety step in any procedure is the proper identification of the client. It is the role of the nursing assistant to be sure they transport the right client to a procedure. Question 12. The medical procedure used to resuscitate a client who does not have a pulse is A. CPR B. DPR C. PPD D. ADA The correct answer is A. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This procedure is used when a client is found unconscious without a pulse. Question 13. A nursing assistant who is threatening to apply a restraint to a resident is an example of which of the following? A. Assault. B. False imprisonment. C. Invasion of privacy. D. Battery. The correct answer is A. Assault is the threat or actual touching of a resident without permission. False imprisonment is to prevent a resident from moving freely about, with or without force. Answer B. Invasion of. Privacy would be failing to keep a resident's affairs confidential or exposing the resident's body when performing care. Answer C. Battery is the unlawful personal violence toward a resident. Answer D. Question 14. Which of the following is an example of verbal communication? A. Touch. B. Facial expressions. C. Body language. D. Speech. The correct answer is D. Speech and sign language are forms of verbal communication. The other selections are all forms of nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication includes the process of sending and receiving messages without the use of words. Question 15. Which of the following statements describes the role of the nursing assistant? A. Performs the list of activities an employer expects the nursing assistant to carry out once hired. B. Provides personal care and assistance as needed. C. Performs work for moral or ethical reasons. D. Conducts actions out of a sense for what is right or wrong. The correct answer is B. Providing personal care and assistance as needed describes the role of the nursing assistant. Performing the list of activities an employer expects the nursing assistant to carry out once hired. Answer A. Is the definition of the responsibilities of the nursing assistant. Performing work for moral or ethical reasons. Answer C. Is an example of ethical reasoning. Conducting actions out of. A sense for what is right or wrong. Answer D. Is the definition for obligation. Question 16. The nursing assistant obtained a resident's temperature as 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Which of the following is the nursing assistant's next action? A. Continue with obtaining the vital signs of the other residents and report the temperature to the first nurse the nursing assistant encounters. B. Ask another nursing assistant to report the temperature to the nurse assigned to the resident. C. Come back to the resident and repeat the temperature after collecting all the vital signs of the other residents. D. Report the temperature to the nurse assigned to the resident immediately. The correct answer is D. The nursing assistant is legally and ethically responsible to report abnormal data to the nurse as soon as possible. The options in A, B, and C represent a delay in reporting, which might lead to A. Change in health status or safety for the resident. Question 17. Which of the following demonstrates dignity and respect for the resident? A. The nursing assistant addresses the resident by his or her first name. B. After hugging the resident, the nursing assistant calls the resident honey or dear. C. The nursing assistant uses the resident's proper name and title whenever addressing the resident. D. The staff calls the resident by a nickname given by the staff. The correct answer is C. To maintain a resident's dignity and respect for him or her as a person, only formal names and titles should be used at all times and in all situations. The options in A, B, and D are ways of addressing close friends and family. Question 18. Which team member is responsible for planning the meals for the residents? A. Orderly. B. Nursing assistant. C. Nurse. D. Dietitian. The correct answer is D. The dietitian is responsible for planning the meals for the residents. The orderly, answer A, and nurse assistant, answer B, are responsible for the provision of care and assistance to residents. The nurse's part as a member of the healthcare team is to carry out the physician's prescription and nursing goals, answer C. Question 19. The nursing assistant assigned to obtain vital signs for a group of residents omits taking the vital signs of one of the residents. When the nurse inquires as to the resident's missing vital signs, the nurse assistant admits forgetting the resident. This is an example of which of the following? A. Accountability. B. Flexibility. C. Dependability. D. Respectability. The correct answer is A. This is an example of accountability, even when admitting that you do not properly carry out your duties. Flexibility, answer B, is your ability to adapt to the situation. Dependability, answer C, 
is a basic expectation set by your employer, and the nursing assistant demonstrates this by his or her commitment to the job and to the residence. Responsibility, answer D, is the ability to fulfill duties and expectations in your role as a nursing assistant. Question 20. A resident's neighbor inquires about the condition of the resident. Which of the following actions is a demonstration of confidentiality by the nursing assistant? A. Share with the neighbor the condition of the resident. B. Inform the neighbor that you cannot share that information. C. Suggest that the neighbor go to the nurse's station with you and view the chart. D. Ask the neighbor to step out into the hall to share the condition of the resident. The correct answer is B. Confidentiality is keeping the resident's medical information private. The options in A, C, and D violate the resident's right to confidentiality. Question 21. Which of the following ways can a nursing assistant demonstrate empathy? A. Putting others ahead of self. B. Sharing of emotions with residents. C. Imagining self in the place of others. D. Going the extra mile for someone. The correct answer is C. Empathy is putting self in the place of someone else to try to understand what he or she might be experiencing without pitying him or her. Putting others ahead of self, answer A, demonstrates. Caring. Sharing of emotions with residents, answer B, demonstrates sharing by friends and is not appropriate for a professional relationship. Going the extra mile for someone, answer D, is an example of respect. Question 22. When a nursing assistant enter a client's room without knocking first, the assistant is demonstrating a lack of privacy for the client. A true. B false. The correct answer is A true. The nursing assistant is to provide privacy and respect for the client by knocking on the door and waiting to be given permission to enter before going in the room each time the assistant needs to enter the room. Question 23. A nursing assistant upholds client confidentiality by A. Sharing information that is needed for the purpose of the client's care. B. Verifying with visitors everything the client tells you. C. Asking the client personal information that is interesting to know. D. Sharing with other nursing assistants when a client reveals a funny story about his or her life. The correct answer is A. Confidentiality is the act of keeping private matters of the client private, not sharing information with anyone who does not need to know it for the care of the client. In answers B, C, and D, the nursing assistant is sharing a client's private information with persons who do not need the information to care for the client. Question 24. When a nursing assistant witnesses a healthcare team member sexually harassing a resident but does not report it is considered A. An invasion of privacy. B. Negligence. C. Aiding and abetting. D. Battery. The correct answer is C. Participating in an unlawful act or observing it and not reporting it is the definition of aiding and abetting an unlawful act. Question 25. What is the second leading cause of death in an individual 65 years of age or older? A. Car accident. B. Falls. C. Choking. D. Drowning. The correct answer is B. The second leading cause of death in the elderly is due to falls or complications resulting from falls. A car accident, A, is a safety issue that is sometimes overlooked in the elderly, but it is not A. Leading cause of death. Many elders have trouble swallowing due to an illness, C. Drowning, D, is not a leading cause of death in the elderly. Question 26. Which of the following is not an example of contamination caused by droplet transmission? A. Pneumonia. B. Influenza. C. Cold. D. Hepatitis B. The correct answer is D. Hepatitis B is transmitted through blood that is contaminated with hepatitis B. Pneumonia, A. Influenza, B, and the common cold, C, are all transmitted via respiratory droplets. Question 27. When equipment is used by multiple residents, it is important to decrease the opportunity for contamination. One way to avoid contamination is by cleaning the equipment with the cleanser provided by the institution. When should the equipment be cleansed? A. Before using the equipment again. B. At the end of the shift. C. After use by every resident. D. At the time of each scheduled cleaning. The correct answer is C. Equipment used for more than one resident is cleaned immediately after each use. Before using the equipment again, A. Is incorrect because of the length of time that might occur between use from one resident to another. At the end of the shift, B is incorrect because the nursing assistant on the next shift might not realize the equipment was not cleaned after it was used on the resident. At the time of each scheduled cleaning, D is incorrect because scheduled cleaning is for regular deep cleaning of all equipment. Question 28. The nursing assistant notices the smell of smoke as he passes by a resident's room. He enters the room and sees that a pillow is on fire in the empty bed next to where a resident is sleeping. What? Should be the nursing assistant's first action according to the race plan. A. Confine. 
The alarm. C. Extinguish. D. Rescue. The correct answer is D. With race, the first action is to rescue any person who might be in danger from the fire. In this case, it is the resident sitting next to the empty bed. Confine, A, alarm, B, and extinguish, C, R. All incorrect because they leave the resident in harm's way. Question 29. Which of the following is not considered appropriate handling of linen? A. Changing it promptly when soiled. B. Folding the soiled portion inward. C. Depositing the soiled linen on the floor. D. Carrying the linen away from your body. The correct answer is C. Depositing linen on the floor causes the soiled linen to contaminate the floor and become a hazard. Changing linen promptly when soiled, A. Folding the soiled portion inward, B. And carrying the linen away from your body, D. Are a part of the procedure for the care of linen. When linen is soiled, it is promptly removed, and then the contaminated side is folded inward and carried away from your body to not contaminate the nursing assistant's uniform. Question 30. Which of the following are age-related changes? A. Decreased vision and hearing. B. Lower intelligence level. C. Difficulty communicating. D. Ability to learn a new skill. The correct answer is A. Decreased hearing and vision are age-related changes. Lower intelligence level, B, is incorrect because the loss of intellectual abilities as you get older is a myth. Difficulty communicating, C is incorrect because most elders do not have problems with communicating unless they have suffered a stroke. The ability to learn a new skill is not impaired in the elderly, D. Question 31. Which of the following actions is not a part of standard precautions? A. Washing hands before and after contact with a resident. B. Wearing gown, goggles, and gloves whenever entering a resident's room. C. Wearing goggles when there is a possibility of splashes. D. Using gloves when there is a possibility of contact with body fluids. The correct answer is B. Protective equipment is chosen according to the possible substance the healthcare worker might have contact with. Washing hands before and after contact with a resident. A. Wearing goggles when there is possibility of splashes. C. And using gloves when there is a possibility of contact with body fluids. D. Are all part of standard precautions to protect the healthcare worker. Question 32. Before serving a resident a meal, it is important for the nursing assistant to properly check that the meal belongs to the resident by performing which of the following activities? A. Checking the resident's identification according to facility policy. B. Asking the roommate to identify the resident. C. Asking the resident to identify self. D. There is no need to check identification because you see the resident several times a week. The correct answer is A. It is important to follow facility policy of identifying residents. The most common way is by checking the resident's armband. Some facilities use pictures for identification. Asking the roommate to identify the resident. B. Asking the resident to identify self. C. And not checking identification because you see the resident several times a week. D. Are sometimes used along with choice A but not as the sole source of identification. Question 33. The registered nurse calls for your help to assist with a resident who has fallen on the floor. You know this incident must be reported to the risk manager of the facility. Which of the nurse's following actions would best relay the events that occurred? A. Writing a note to the physician. B. Completing an incident report. C. Calling the director for the facility. D. Completing an adverse drug reaction form. The correct answer is B. An incident report serves to accurately record what occurred, when it occurred, and all the details of the event because problems related to the incident might occur sometime later. Writing a note to the physician. A. Is incorrect because the physician is called as soon as possible to update him or her on the condition of the resident. Calling the director of the facility. C. Is wrong because the risk manager is responsible to investigate any accidents or incidents. Completing an adverse drug reaction form. D. Is wrong because an adverse drug reaction form is completed only when an incident occurred due to a medication. Question 34. A nursing assistant comes to work complaining of a sore throat, fever, and chills. She knows the unit is short a nursing assistant for today, so she did not call in sick. Which of the following is the best action of the nurse who is in charge? A. Give the nursing assistant who is ill medication. B. Allow the nursing assistant who is ill to rest after AM care is completed. C. Instruct all the nursing assistants on the unit to work in pairs. D. Send the ill nursing assistant home. The correct answer is D. The best action of the nurse is to send the ill nursing assistant home to protect the other employees and the residents from spreading infection. Giving the nursing assistant who is ill. Medication, A. Allowing the nursing assistant who is ill to rest after AM care is completed, B. And instructing all the nursing assistants on the unit to work in pairs, C. Exposes others to illness, 
and those in a weakened state of health could contact the illness. Question 35. In the RACE acronym, the C stands for A. Collect. B. Call. C. Come. D. Confine. The correct answer is D. The first action if a fire occurs is to rescue any person who might be in danger from the fire. The second step is to pull the alarm or call for help. The C in the race stands for confine. The last step is to extinguish. Question 36. Nursing assistants should always check residents' armbands before serving their meals, performing nursing care, or other tasks. A. False. B. True. The correct answer is B. The identity of residents is to be checked before serving their meals, performing nursing care, or any other tasks. Question 37. What are two general goals for AM care? A. Remove soil and promote an increase in skin moisture. B. Promote relaxation of the resident and decrease need for mobility. C. Increase circulation and decrease incidence of pressure ulcers. D. Remove harmful bacteria and promote well-being. The correct answer is D. The two primary goals of bathing are protection from harmful bacteria and promoting the well-being of the residents. Removing soil and promoting an increase in skin moisture, A, is incorrect because bathing might increase skin dryness, not decrease it. Promoting relaxation of the resident. And decreasing need for mobility, B, is incorrect because residents require mobility to decrease morbidity. Increasing circulation and decreasing incidence of pressure ulcers, C, is incorrect because pressure ulcers are decreased by cleanliness and frequent change of position along with proper nutrition. Question 38. The nurse hands the nurse assistant a tube of medication and asks her to apply it after she has completed the resident's bath. Which of the following would be the nursing assistant's best response? A. I will gladly apply the medication as soon as I dry the skin. B. I don't have the time to do your job in mine too. C. As a nursing assistant, I can't apply medication without a nurse present in the room. D. As a nursing assistant, applying medication is beyond my scope of practice. The correct answer is D. Nursing assistants are not to apply medications because they do not have a license, training, or knowledge to administer medications. The statements in choices A and C are incorrect because the nursing assistant is planning to administer the medication, which is not part of his or her role. The statement in choice B is incorrect due to the use of improper communication. Question 39. Which statement about taking an oral temperature is false? A. Thermometer is placed in the mouth under the tongue in the sublingual pocket. B. Wait 10 minutes if the resident has consumed any hot or cold liquids. C. The normal oral temperature is 96.6 F. D. Thermometer covers are used on all residents. The correct answer is C. Normal oral temperatures are between 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit and 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Placing the thermometer in the mouth under the tongue in the sublingual pocket, A. Waiting 10 minutes if the resident has consumed any hot or cold liquids, B. And using thermometer covers on all residents, D. Are all steps used to determine the oral temperature. Question 40. When should an apical pulse rate be repeated? A. A pulse rate of 84 beats per minute. B. A pulse rate of 54 beats per minute. C. A pulse rate of 76 beats per minute. D. A pulse rate of 66 beats per minute. The correct answer is B. The normal adult heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. A pulse rate of 84, A, 76, C, and 66, D, are within the normal range. Question 41. Which of the following definitions is true? A. Tachycardia is a slow heart rate. B. An irregular heart rate should be taken for at least 30 seconds. C. The carotid site is used most often to obtain the pulse. D. Bradycardia is a slow heart rate. The correct answer is D. Bradycardia is the heart rate below 60 beats per minute. Answer A. Tachycardia is a slow heart rate. Is incorrect. Tachycardia is the heart rate above 100 beats per minute. Answer B. An irregular heart rate should be taken for at least 30 seconds. Is incorrect because irregular heart rates are to be obtained for one full minute. Answer C. The carotid site is used most often to obtain the pulse. Is incorrect. The radial site is used most often to obtain a resident's pulse. Question 42. Which blood pressure should the nursing assistant repeat before reporting it to the nurse? A 90 sixtieths of a millimeter Hg. B 120 70 fourths of a millimeter Hg. C 140 60 eighths of a millimeter Hg. D 130 70 eighths of a millimeter Hg. The correct answer is A. Normal blood pressure for an adult is less than 120-80 and pre-hypertensive is less than 139-89. The blood pressure readings of 120-74 of a millimeter Hg, 140-68 of a millimeter Hg, 
and 130 of a millimeter HG and choices B, C, and D are within normal limits. Question 43. All of the following steps are part of the procedure for weighing residents, except what? A. Residents are to remove shoes before weighing. B. Residents are to void before being weighed. C. Weights are obtained when the nursing assistant has time in the day schedule. D. Scales are to be calibrated to zero each day or routinely. The correct answer is C. Residents should be weighed at approximately the same time each day. Having the resident remove shoes, A. Voiding, B. Before being weighed, and calibrating the scales to zero each day or routinely, D. Are part of the procedure for assuring accurate weighing of the residents. Question 44. A resident who was very talkative earlier in the day is now difficult to awaken for his bath. The most appropriate action for the nursing assistant is which of the following? A. Ask another nursing assistant if this has ever happened before. B. Report the change in condition to the charge nurse immediately. C. Realize he does not want his bath now and come back later. D. Reposition the resident and make sure he is comfortable. The correct answer is B. Change in a resident's condition is serious and should be communicated to the nurse immediately. Answer A is not correct because assessment of the resident is not part of the nursing assistant's role. Answer C involves assumptions that might lead to harm of the resident. Answer D is incorrect because the first and most important action of the nursing assistant in this situation is to communicate immediately to the nurse the change in the resident's condition. Question 45. The nurse assistant might expect to find pressure ulcers in all of the following locations except where A. Heels B. Nose C. Elbows D. Knees The correct answer is B. Pressure ulcers are more prone to develop in bony areas. The heels, A, elbows, C, and knees, D, are areas with the highest incidence of pressure ulcers, which are located on bony surfaces. Question 46. Which of the following is false regarding assisting a resident with his or her bath? A. Have the room free from drafts. B. Assure the resident's privacy. C. Warm the bath water to between 110 and 115 degrees. D. Use only one washcloth and towel. The correct answer is D. At least two washcloths and towels will be needed. One is for clean areas and the other for areas considered dirty. This is done to prevent spread of organisms. Keeping the room free from drafts, A. Assuring the resident's privacy, B. And warming the bath water to between 110 and 115 degrees, C. Are correct. The room is to be free of drafts, and the room temperature should be between 68 degrees Fahrenheit and 74 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent chilling. The resident's privacy is to be maintained at all times. Bath water temperature should be warm to promote comfort, help relaxation of muscles, and prevent chilling but should not be hot, which risks injury to the resident. Question 47. According to psychology, the highest basic need a person is able to obtain to promote health and well-being is A. Cultural needs B. Physical needs C. Sexual needs D. Spiritual needs The correct answer is D. This sense of completeness or self-fulfillment is called and, according to psychology, meets the highest level of basic human needs. Answers A, B, and C are basic spiritual needs and are important to a patient's well-being, these needs must be met first before a person can reach the highest need of spirituality. Question 48. The CNA should always be instructed on equipment before using it. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is A. True. To operate any equipment. The CNA should first be instructed on the correct use so as not to harm the patient or themselves. Question 49. How can the nursing assistant best ensure the safety of a resident who is legally blind? A. Keep the call light within easy reach. B. Keep an overhead light in front of the resident. C. Speak loudly when addressing the resident. D. When assisting residents to walk, stand in front of them and hold their hand to guide them. The correct answer is A. A call light is to be easy to locate and reach when needed by the resident to call for help. Keeping an overhead light in front of the resident, B, is incorrect because the light source should be behind the resident to prevent a glare effect. Speaking loudly when addressing the resident, C, is incorrect because other senses such as hearing are heightened. When assisting residents to walk, stand in front of them and hold their hand to guide them, D, is incorrect. The nursing assistant should stand beside or slightly behind the resident and gently guide by the elbow. Question 50. Which of the following is the best way to communicate with a resident who is completely deaf? A. Speak loudly and clearly. B. Smile and turn on the television. C. Write out all communication. D. Sit next to the resident and speak into his or her ear. The correct answer is C. When a resident is 100% deaf, the only form of communication is written communication. Speaking loudly and clearly, 
A, and sitting next to the resident and speaking into his or her ear, D, is effective for someone who is partially deaf or hard of hearing. Smiling and turning on the television, C, is an incorrect form of communication for the hearing and the deaf.